Yesterday, evil made a promise. And today, that promise was kept. The gates of hell were opened up. And like water bursting through a crumbling dam, darkness came spilling out of those gates and bombarded Israel in the early morning hours with hundreds of deadly rockets trained on innocent bystanders who were just going about their daily lives. It has begun. I have warned for a long time now that the old hatreds were beginning to rise again. And the world was about to repeat an awful pattern. And here it is. This hour, Israel is at war. And if it's not already, the world soon will be at war. Because this is a battle against the armies of profound darkness. Evil, and there is no other way to describe it, it is evil. Islamic extremism is evil, period. What else can you say about an enemy that celebrates and condones this? This is one of the several children and young infants who were wounded in the attacks which began in the wee hours of the morning and killed at least three Israeli citizens who once again awoke to the familiar sound of missile alarms and were forced to grab their children and their families and head to a safe room in their house. If there is no safe room, they hurriedly packed up and ran to the nearest bomb shelter. And if there's no bomb shelter, well, you just hope and pray. It's very hard to imagine what life is like in Israel for America. I didn't, I didn't understand Israel until I went there. You think in a way that people live in constant fear, but they don't. I think it's this, the opposite. They live in constant courage, constant strength. Looking up at the sky, not to marvel at its beauty or see what the weather is doing, but to patrol the horizon for any sign of smoke trails and enemy rockets on the way. When we were over in Israel and we did our first night for restoring courage, we as foolish Americans lit up fireworks and the crowd didn't know that we had fireworks and boy almost all of them hit the ground. I realized how much we take for granted. You just never know, is this time going to be you or will it be our children on the news? The latest in the horrific of unending line of innocent civilians unable to escape the reign of terror. The fear became reality for three Israeli families this morning. In fact, you saw the headline. This is, this is from CBS. Israel says three killed in rocket fire from Gaza after assassination. Oh, that's, just, that's, that's it. Three killed. Those headlines are written and maybe consumed, maybe consumed. But nobody sees the people. Instead of reading the news, let me just tell the story of the three killed. Let's start with Mira. Mira and her husband, Samuel. They just put their four-year-old son and two little girls to bed last night. And they stayed up a while later before nodding off themselves. Mira, I would imagine, didn't sleep very well last night. After all, most pregnant women don't. Mira had recently returned to Israel because the health care in Israel is far better than it is in India. And with one baby on the way, obviously they wanted the best. That morning, they were preparing to attend a memorial service where they would be honoring the memory of this Israeli couple who were tragically killed in the 2008 Mumbai, India terrorist attacks. Mir and her husband, they had an awful lot in common with those victims. They were both involved in the Jewish community outreach in India. But little did they know, in a very short period of time, they were about to have even more in common with him. It was just a few minutes before nine this morning. Every Israeli's worst nightmare became a reality for Mira and Samuel. The alarm sounded. They were in their apartment. 
they began preparing to evacuate when a rocket from Gaza made a direct hit on their apartment and blew the building and concrete walls to pieces. This is one of the rockets. When I was over in Gaza, um, rockets were fired while I was there. This is the shrapnel of one of the rockets that was fired that day that I was there. Imagine one of those coming into your apartment building. Well, that's what it looked like. Samuel was stunned. Samuel was wounded, covered in rubble, wounded by shrapnel, but he was still alive. Put yourself in his shoes just for a second. Imagine the terror in the ensuing minutes after the attack, the terror of not hearing any of your family members, frantically searching the rubble of your home, not knowing if your wife or your children are hurt or even alive, hoping and praying, please dear God, just let me hear the voice of one of my children saying, Daddy. Samuel's three children survived but his pregnant wife was hurt badly. The neighbors quickly came to an aid, but attempts to resuscitate her failed. Mira and her unborn child passed away just a few minutes after nine this morning. I talked to a friend early this morning in Israel who said, Glenn, if you go with this story this morning, please don't use their names because their children still don't know their mother is dead. Early this morning, our time, they were still asking, how's mommy? How is she? Can we see her? Needless to say, the family is still in shock. Dad doesn't know exactly what to say kind of hard to explain to little children because mom died of from terrorism who would want to kill mom well i'm sure you got the same story when you read the headline israel says three killed in rocket fire i'm sure you've got the same thing i love this it says israel says three killed in rocket fire from gaza after assassination of hamas chief ahmed jabari the story kind of gives you the feeling that the two attacks bear some sort of resemblance. The Israeli attack, attack that they're referring to is this, a precise strike on one car right there. One car, one guy, Hamas terrorist. We'll have more in a minute on him, but do you notice the difference? One side does a precise strike on a single car carrying a known terrorist from a designated terrorist organization, and the other side just haphazardly lobs unguided missiles into civilian neighborhoods. Oh, yeah, but they don't have the capability of any... Really? Really? Is that what it is? One side kills a radical killer. The other kills a pregnant mom. There's two others the press refuses today to put a face on. These men. These two. One, in his late 40s, a father of three. Served his country in his youth and got married young. He was excited to have children but thought he'd never be able to have any kids. And after years and years of trying with no success, 20 years go by. 20. My wife and I tried to have a child. And we couldn't. We still would like to have another child, and we can't. I know what it feels like. He went for 20 years. Then, nine years ago, his wife became pregnant with twin boys. And eight months ago, they were blessed with a little girl. He waited 20 years all that time. He died last night. He won't see his boys grow up. 
He won't be there for them. Teach them. Show them how to be a man. Show them how to live with honor and integrity. He won't get to do what I did this summer with my oldest daughter, my second oldest daughter, walk her down the aisle. His daughter won't even have any recollection at all of her father. And the third victim was a 24-year-old with his entire life in front of him. His mom said today that he had a big heart and a great sense of humor. He was excited about building a house of his own, and he had just begun studying the Torah. An eye for an eye! Is it? Really? It's pretty clear this isn't an eye for an eye. And that's what the media attempts to portray it as. They have the entire story out of whack. They always have. It should be fairly obvious who's on the side of truth, yet Hamas pushed this picture, this picture, of a dead child. I saw this this morning and I thought, oh my gosh, look at that. Another dead child. It was all over social media today. The result of the Israeli strike. Hmm. No, it's not. This picture is actually a picture from Syria. How do you know? Well, easy. Here it is. Syria's civil conflict in pictures. It's slide number two from a slideshow of Syria's civil conflict from October 16th. So how, how did that happen? Was he killed there? Or was he killed by Israelis a month ago in Syria? Lies.